This video project seeks to answer the phenomenologically inspired questions of how, why, and with what do people make meaningful places out of sites. In this study, I am investigating these questions in regards to an archaeological site known as the Terrace Pueblo Archaeological Site, LA581 by members of a volunteer organization named the Friends of Tejeres Pueblo. For this project, I selected five of the most prominent members of this organization to conduct formal interviews with. All five of the informants are on the board of directors of the Friends of Tejeres Pueblo organization and are intimately involved in the organization's activities. I hope to show in this video that the places created out of this site vary between these individuals and that their past experiences both before and after learning of this site fundamentally inform their conceptions of this site and the places they make out of it. I also wish to show that an overarching theme or interpretive message can be internalized and play a major role in the way people think about or imagine a site. Phenomenology is the school of thought founded by German philosopher Edmund Husserl and further developed by his student Maurice Merleau ponty the philosophical discipline of phenomenology attempts to study the world as it is actually experienced. Unlike the mathematics-based sciences, phenomenology would seek not to explain the world, but to describe as closely as possible the way the world makes itself evident to awareness, the way things first arise in our direct sensorial experience. The main concept of import to the discussion in this project is the phenomenological distinction between a site and a place. From this perspective, a site is a physical or geographical location along with everything that lives or exists on it, whereas a place is a cognitive or mental construction commonly colored by sentiment or emotion which consists in what individuals make of a site. The place can be thought of as a mode or genre of human experience rather than as an object. The most important idea derived from this distinction between a site and a place then is that the same site may lead to fundamentally different places and that different sites may lead to the same place. The archaeological site that will be the focus of this video is the Tejeres Pueblo Archaeological Site LA581 which is located behind the Sandia Ranger District Office south of the village of Tejeres, New Mexico. This site was a Pueblo 4 period village site that was occupied roughly from AD 1313 to AD 1425. The site was primarily excavated by the University of New Mexico Archaeology Field School during the 1970s and was reburied at the conclusion of the 1976 field season. The site exists now as a national historic place within the Sandia Ranger District of the Cibola National Forest and is maintained by the U.S. Forest Service. The site contains a trail with interpretive signs for self-guided tours and the Forest Service, with help from volunteers, offer a variety of opportunities to learn about the site, ancestral Puebloan culture, and the field of archaeology. The Friends of Tejeres Pueblo is a nonprofit organization that works directly with the Sandia Ranger District of the U.S. Forest Service in relation to the Tejeres Pueblo archaeological site. Their mission statement reads, The Friends of Tejeres Pueblo is a 501c3 nonprofit all-volunteer organization that, in partnership with the Sandia Ranger District, seeks to promote understanding, awareness, appreciation, and protection of archaeological resources throughout the Cibola National Forest, developing and implementing educational programs and activities, and the facilities that house them are paramount to our organization's efforts to provide an environment where visitors, children, and adults alike can learn about archaeology and the ancestral Pueblo culture of the East Mountains. The Friends of Tejeres Pueblo work with the Sandia Ranger District in many capacities. Many of the members work as interpretive guides, giving guided tours of and interpretive programs related to the archaeological site. These guided tours and programs are often arranged for visiting school groups who come to the site on field trips, but are also done for other groups requesting such programs. The Friends of Tejeres Pueblo also hosts several annual events in association with the Sandia Ranger District, such as Heritage Preservation Day, Mountain Discovery Day, Children's Archaeology Days, and so on. 
They also host a monthly lecture series where they bring local scholars in archaeology and related areas to give presentations or lectures which are free and open to the public. My name is Andrew Rutkowick. I'm a Forest Service volunteer concentrating on interpretive work at the Terrace Pueblo Archaeological Site. My name is Nancy Woodworth. I've been a volunteer for the uh, Friends of Tejeros Pueblo for the last 15, 16 years. And I'm president of the Friends of Tejeros Pueblo. My name is Dottie Bender. With the Pueblo site, I got involved a few years ago. I do mostly the tours of uh, the groups that come through. Uh, and I'm treasurer for the uh, Friends of the Pueblo. Judy Friedenberg. I am an interpretive guide and a member of Friends of Tierra's Pueblo. And I'm on the board for Friends of Tierra's Pueblo. I'm Candace Lord. I am the vice president of the Friends of Tierra's Pueblo. And um, I am the chairman of the Education Committee, the Exhibit Planning Committee, and I'm the webmaster for the Friends of Tierra's Pueblo website as well as a volunteer. What's important to me is the fact that uh, the site has a very extensive history with regard to its collection. From, of artifacts from the excavation that was done. Uh, it is an excellent example of uh, pre-Columbian uh, Native American life and <clears throat> its convenience to the public and it allowed me to uh, gain an insight into uh, what life was like for the people that lived here uh, through my reading and study. I like the fact that it's a prehistoric site and that it has been excavated. Otherwise, the site is important because of the, the care that has been taken of it by the Forest Service and the Friends of Terrace Pueblo and the fact that it's used for educational purposes with the public schools and the community at large. There's a lot of information here if you are interested. The signage on the self-guided trail is very good. It has a lot of good information. The models are, are good. There are people in the ranger station who can answer questions for people who have just dropped by. There, there's a wealth of information here, and one of the most exciting aspects is that the information continues to, to come through because there are more studies being done on the, on the site and the artifacts. Basically, it gives you a history of the area and it gives you the opportunity to imagine what life was like in this area many years ago. I think the fact that the Spanish were never here um, when the Pueblo was active, I think that's important. Uh, for people to learn about this site. I would hope other people would take away uh, a curiosity of what the site was like when the people lived here, how the people had to survive to live on the land, and uh, just to pique their interest in other archaeology sites within the area. I actually became interested in the site before I even moved to this area from the uh, Chicago area. I had subscribed to a newspaper from uh, the East Mountains and I read various things about the, the lectures that Friends of Terrace Pueblo sponsored and the activities at the ranger station and the fact that there was in fact a, a, an excavation site here. So I was pretty intrigued with that when I moved here and shortly after I got settled in I, I came to the ranger station and investigated the situation and joined Friends of Chairs Pueblo. It was interesting to me, giving me the history. I like going, not only seeing this one, but when we travel to other sites, um, I enjoy 
reading the history of when they started and when they ended, where they went, and I begin to find that there's such a similarity uh, among all of them. My <clears throat> knowledge of uh, Native, pre Columbian Native American life was very limited, and uh, I personally was very excited about being able to learn about what happened here uh, because I always had a very passive interest in archaeology and Native American uh, cultures, cultures <clears throat> which I never uh, pursued uh, during my working life and it gave me an opportunity to do that uh, when I got here. I was very intrigued by the actually the group of individuals that were working uh, for Friends of Tierra's Pueblo. Um, I didn't have a tour of the site first. I actually found out about the Tuesday night lecture series, the monthly lecture series that they hold here. The volunteers have created meaningful places out of this site through interchanges and personal experiences either on or related to the Terrace Pueblo archaeological site. One of the main ways that many of the volunteers connect with the site is through their role as interpreter. As interpretive guides, they facilitate learning about the site and archaeology in general. Many of these volunteers take great pride in being interpretive guides. In working with the site as, a, as an interpreter, I've particularly enjoyed working with children. With some of them, you can see the interest come alive as they walk the trail, and, and I really enjoy watching that and helping enable that to happen. Some people have said I was born a born teacher because I, I started teaching practically from the time I could talk. I was a public school teacher, and then I was a corporate trainer and consultant, so this does fit in with that that personal background. My stories generate have to do with the kids that come through, that I take through. I guess I approach it differently. Uh, having been a secretary at school for so long, so I can pick out the different age groups and kind of get down to their level to talk to them. And uh, it's been working. When I give tours, particularly to younger children, uh, I just received so much satisfaction to be able to uh, relate to them what the site was like and just uh, my connection with the public and uh, being able to pass the word on and hopefully they would take away um, a feeling for the site also. I guess just working here it becomes part of you and you begin to have what, some ownership with it and you want to see it succeed. You want people to know about it. I like to see it and I like to have people come and look at it. And when I'm able to answer their questions, it makes me feel better. I think it's a very valuable resource uh, and uh, I think if more people in present day had an appreciation for uh, how people had to live and how they were able to live based upon their knowledge base, just utilizing the materials that they found around them. Uh, I think that's a very important and, and persuasive message to the current, uh, the current society. Another way that many of the volunteers connect to the site is via their position within the Friends of Tejeres Pueblo organization or through special projects they have been involved with. Over the years, uh, my involvement uh, with the site has gotten more and more intense, uh, particularly with regard to uh, uh, ways that we might beneficiate uh, the site, ways we might uh, spread knowledge of the site to the general public and um, <clears throat> that uh, evolved into uh, 
the Friends of Teheris Pueblo beginning the construction of an interpretive center. I'm enjoying uh, the whole exhibit planning part of things. I think that's just tremendously exciting to know that whatever small part I may play in the building of this interpretive center, m part of my heart and soul are going into this and that's going to be there for a long, long time and maybe longer than I'm around. <laughs> there is a lot of material that was taken from the site and the excavation in the 70s and I've been helping with the group of volunteers who are working with the Maxwell Museum in cataloging those artifacts. That has been a very fascinating endeavor and we're, we're making a lot of progress. Being a chemist, uh, I've always been and still am uh, very much uh, interested in technology and how things were done and material science and what what materials were used to uh, uh, do various things and uh, I am, I was more interested from a pottery standpoint in the materials of pottery uh, and the process for uh, making pottery objects and firing pottery and the, the complexity of the knowledge that was required to do a decent job to make a useful item <clears throat> on the part of the people who lived here and on the part of any pre-Columbian society. Because I was curious of what base of knowledge that was, would be required to, on the part of the residents, uh, the pre-Columbian residents here, uh, I did some experimental archaeology where I uh, made a number of crude <coughs> shapes made from the clay I found uh, on the site and uh, talked to a number of individuals how it might have been fired and fired those clay in a wood uh, trench kiln and all of that turned out to be very informative uh, because it uh, uh, made a very distinct impression on me that they were a whole laundry list of things that they had to consider when they were making a pot. Andy's participation in an experimental archaeology project that he developed tapped into his professional background in chemistry and has created a very personally meaningful connection for him with the Tejeres Pueblo archaeological site. Back in 1973, uh, my deceased husband uh, lived in a little house uh, up over the hill from the uh, archaeological site. And I met him in 1973, and during that first summer, we would come over, uh, walk over to the site when Dr. Linda Cordell was excavating, and we became very uh, interested in what was going on there. Uh, and, th and we would be, uh, we would come and visit that site, probably the three or four years that she was working there. And then when they backfilled it, uh, we would. Uh, over the next 10-15 years, we did a lot of hiking back in this area. While the actual observance of the Tejeres Pueblo excavation and the relationship that Nancy developed with Dr. Linda Cordell certainly contributed to the sense of place that she developed for this site, it also seems that these early experiences with the site represent important memories for her of her deceased husband. One summer, my husband, my deceased husband, Woody and I had an opportunity to go over and work at the um, Archaeological Society of New Mexico's field school at the Vidal site in, outside of Gallup. And we spent a week there uh, doing excavation. And it was so fascinating with all the um, different um, methods and things that they were using in, in surveying and excavating the place. But the most exciting thing is, is when you are using your brush or using your little picks and brushing away the dirt, and all of a sudden, there'll be a huge piece of sherd or a piece of burnt wood or something that you have uncovered that has been buried for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's just so exciting to have something like this, uh, that, that you discover something like this. And so I try to relate that to all the things that were discovered at the uh, Tejeros Pueblo excavation. 
And so that really made a very strong connection to this Pueblo. Nancy's experience with actually doing an excavation at another site has translated into a greater appreciation for, knowledge about, and connection to the artifacts excavated from the Tejeres Pueblo archaeological site and the site itself. It presents a fabulous opportunity for me to uh, utilize my, my education even though I didn't major in it. I took all of the certainly lower division classes and, and some upper division classes in anthropology and archaeology just out of interest while I was obtaining a degree in a different area. And so coming here, suddenly I actually have a place that I can put all this learning and interest uh, into active use. It's a, a great opportunity for me to be able to serve my community. I really enjoy working with kids and I really enjoy uh, using skills like building the website. This aspect of Candace's connection to the site has to do with the place she is creating as a locus for the application of her knowledge and skills in the form of community service. I would have to say that probably some of the most meaningful moments have been when I've been here by myself. When I have come down to uh, the Pueblo site and walked the trail by myself. I don't live that far from here and to me it's all the same uh, kind of geographical location and uh, there is something about this land. I, I consider not just the land that is out there at the Pueblo site, but the land I live on. This is sacred land. I was raised in the Christian faith, and um, while certainly basic tenets will remain with me for my whole life, um, through my lifetime I have selected um, different rituals um, and uh, maybe compounded those original beliefs with other beliefs from other cultures and I can relate in my own spiritual practice some of the things that I learn about the people uh, in the Pueblo culture uh, think of as uh, utilizing in their practice, their spiritual practices and um, it's just interesting to me that uh, However, I came upon feeling the closest connection when I did certain things to find out that many of those things are within, um, you know, indigenous realm of beliefs, I, I think is a little bit interesting. I think they had a lot of things right. Candace also discussed the connection she feels to the ancient inhabitants of this area, their spiritual beliefs, and the land itself. It seems that the spiritual connection that Candace feels with this area, which includes the Tejeres Pueblo archaeological site, has had a large impact on her conception or sense of this place. I think that part of my interest stems from the fact that I am part Cherokee, way, way, way back, great, great, great grandmother. The family has always been I guess I could say proud of the Native American heritage. Uh, that seemed to stay with the family. That has always been a fascinating kind of uh, part of, of my, my background, fascinating to me. I've always, since I was 14, I've looked forward to coming to New Mexico and have really wanted to live here, partly because of the Native American heritage here. For Judy, her family's Native American heritage has long been a source of interest, which has led her to search out information about Native American history and culture, a journey that has ultimately led her to form a relationship with the Terrace Pueblo archaeological site. In my formal interview with each of my five informants, I asked the following question. When you close your eyes and imagine this site, either as it is now or in the past, what do you see? If I close my eyes and think about the site, I see activity mostly. It's kind of a beehive of activity. I see a 
abundance of activity going on in the plaza. I just see them being very busy. I see people engaged in various everyday kinds of activities as people go about their daily chores. Everyday chores. Daily tasks. Being busy with chores to keep them going from day to day. Men out hunting. Some going out hunting. Hunting primarily. Men returning from hunting. Other women coming back from gathering. Gathering seeds. Gathering materials and planting. Farming. The sound of, of rock scraping on rock as people are grinding corn. The sounds of women grinding. Women cooking. Weaving and some making pots and some making wood items. I see, uh, you know, children being taught, children playing. The children playing, children laughing, the voices of kids ringing in the canyon. They don't have stores to run to, and so everything they get has to come from the land. Everybody going about their daily chores just to be able to exist here making a living from the land that it would take for them to survive in this harsh climate and the, how creative they were and how uh, resourceful they were in using the land to, uh, to live from. The responses indicate an interesting trend. Each informant's answer to this question focuses on the daily tasks or chores performed in order to live from the land and characterizes the scene as busy or full of activity. It should come as no big surprise then to learn that the interpretive theme used in giving guided tours of the Tejeres Pueblo archaeological site is in fact living with the land. It seems to me that the way one imagines or reimagines a site must directly and fundamentally affect the place one makes out of that site. So what effect does an overarching interpretive theme such as living with the land have on an individual's conception or creation of a place from this site? The use of this overarching interpretive theme and the accompanying training on how to use it to interpret the site has no doubt created a shared imagined history. This shared imagined history may function in each of the volunteers' sense of place differently, but at base they all share a similar account of the site's history and a relatively synonymous imagined view of what it was like. These similarities in turn give them all a common ground from which to build their own unique and personal places out of this site based on their own experiences with it. It seems that the interpretive scenario used to discuss the site then becomes the common ground from which they each create their own place and this common base of knowledge may lead to the creation of similar or at least mutually intelligible places from this site. In the end, I have found that many different places have been made from this site and I assume that as long as people continue to visit the Tejeres Pueblo archaeological site, new places will continue to be created. <laughs>